Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. It's Diane here again and it's raining again. But nevertheless, we're thinking about the spring and the flowers seem to be the thing at the moment. I looked on my bookshelf at random this morning and found this lovely illustrated book, Flowers of the Countryside, by a lady called Marjorie Blamey, who I think is probably no longer with us. And uh, it made me think about, first of all, a few painting courses I went on years ago, and then about the interest that there is at the moment for botanical drawings and line and wash painting and so on. So I thought I'd just have a look through here and I'm finding paintings very similar to ones that um, that I have been doing myself. I didn't realise how much this book must have affected me because I haven't looked, opened it for ages. Anyway, I came to this page here. I was thinking about pansies because they're about the only thing at the moment which is really doing well in the garden apart from the rhododendrons. And I thought it would be nice to do a little pansy scene. These are wild pansies. This here is the original uh, flower that uh, lies behind all the wonderful, beautiful uh, cultivated pansies that we have nowadays. So I thought as a kind of homage to the spring and nature, I would have a go at having a, doing a sketch of those. So this is my practice piece, which I just did. It, uh, it's on a piece of watercolour paper which has been folded to make a card, so it would be nice as a gift as well. And here I've just done a couple of pansies, and then we've got wild violets here, and marsh violets, dog violets, things like that, all part of the same viola family. So I thought I would show you how I do that kind of thing, and if you want to have a go, um, why not? So I have a piece of stretched paper here, and first thing I'm going to do is sketch them in pencil. And then once I've done that, I'm going to paint them. And uh, then I'm going to put uh, some details in using a fine liner. And the colour paints that I'm going to use, I'm going to use sap green for the, for the leaves um, to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to use, because they are violets, I'm going to use um, a nice purple colour, quinacridone purple, I think will probably do quite nicely for that. And I will use lemon yellow in the middle of the, of the violets where it goes a little bit yellow. And an absolutely minuscule tiny dab of orange, uh, probably quinacridone gold will do for that because there is a tiny dab of orange in the middle. This one here, I did it too heavily, so that's you learn something when you do your practice piece, uh, always. I learned plenty while I was doing that. So I shall uh, start the drawing now. And um, <clears throat> I don't normally do uh, what you might call botanical type things, um, because, especially for YouTube, because to get a, an impactful Instagram worthy image, um, you don't necessarily want to take hours and hours over a pencil drawing, but I'll just show you how I draw the pansy and the leaf. I'll just show you that once and then I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the paper and then we'll paint it together. So the wild pansy is basically the same as the domesticated pansy in as much as it starts with a centre which you could um, represent using a back-to-back pair of brackets or a C back to front and a C the regular way around. And then the bottom leaf, petal, why do we do that? Is um, kind of heart shaped like that. And then you've got one petal here, another petal there, and then there are two behind. The wild pansy is the same as the domestic pansy. They all have five leaves, not three or four four petals, that is, five petals, not three or four, and um, this is how they're arranged, with the two at the back, one over the other, like that. And then in the centre they have lines radiating out like this, radiating out like this, and then lines coming down there as well. This area here is dark, and then obviously there are veins on the petals behind. 
they have a stem which comes out at the back in a kind of hook. So the, the stems always seem to be like that. And then the leaves are deeply indented like that. And then they go up in a kind of spear shape. So first of all, you have a couple of indents like that, and then a longer piece with serrations along it like that. That's the typical pansy or uh, yeah, pansy leaf. So that's how they go. And uh, we could have another one coming out from the same base and just draw the stem up to here. It hooks over like that. Then you're going to do the back-to-back -back C, uh, the heart shape. They are one of the old names for violets was heart's ease. I don't know if it's because it was good for heart complaints or whether it was because the shape of the leaf was like a heart, a petal, petal. Goodness gracious me, where's my coffee? So there we are, that's, that's what they look like. And then what you want to do is obviously um, come up with some kind of pretty arrangement that suits you. Um, so this is, these are wild pansies, so I'm going to, on this side here, I'm going to put a, a marsh violet, which is a bit like sweet violet, same kind of thing. The violets have a different shaped leaf, which is quite nice because it's convenient for um, variety in your painting. And the violet's leaf is heart-shaped like that. Whereas the flower is the same kind of idea. We have a petal which comes down in the front. It's not quite so heart-shaped as the uh, as the pansy and then one petal comes out like that another one like that and then two at the top so it's not such a well-defined kind of shape but it has the same sorts of markings like that <clears throat> and then we could put another leaf in here when they're before they've unfurled the the leaves are kind of tightly closed up like that with a sort of crinkled edge so they look quite cute and we can have another one here that's partly open like that and then maybe we'll put another flower down here basically five petals on this one like that and maybe we'll put another heart-shaped leaf up here then over this side um, I'm going to put some dog violets which are again a variety same kind of thing but slightly different they have little leaflets on their stems like that and then the stem curls over quite sharply at the top more sharply than the pansy and then we have five longer petals like this with lines on them like that and they also have uh, a heart-shaped leaf, unlike the pansy. This uh, dog violet. And uh, we'll put another one up here. A curly stem at the top. And then five kind of fairly random sort of petals. And so that's the idea and you can obviously develop that as much as you like put as many on your page as you want and then once you've got your design done we can come back and paint it
I think when you're doing um, something that's fairly botanical in uh, nature, it's usually best, I would think, to start with the lightest colours first. So I'm going to drop in the yellow. This particular pansy, this wild pansy, has got a yellow uh, petal at the bottom and yellow ones on the side. These ones behind are going to be violet. And, um, and this one down here has got some yellow in the centre there, but the other leaves are going to be also uh, dark violet and a more pinky violet. And most, almost all flowers have some kind of yellowish centre. It must be because it attracts the bee. Um, so I'm just going to put a tiny dab of yellow in the centre of all the flowers. And then I'm going to um, sort of wait for that to dry slightly. Um, but while, so while that one is drying, I can paint this one at the back here. So I need my um, Cheveningham or Conacridone purple. Or you could use Windsor purple, Windsor violet, um, any of those colors. Or you could mix with um, ultramarine, and um, alizarin crimson, you can mix quite an acceptable mauve. So I'm going to use um, um, a violet or a mauve or a purple or whatever you want to call it um, that I've mixed myself so that uh, you can see it can be done. That's ultramarine there and this is alizarin crimson and together they make a very decent purpley colour. This on the other hand is Dioxys in purple, which is almost exactly the same. Um, so it doesn't really matter. The thing about the one that you mix yourself from the blue and the red is that it will perhaps be m maybe slightly less vibrant um, and it might be more interesting for that reason. Sometimes um, you're better off with a colour that you've mixed yourself. Also, if you're going to do mixing yourself, Consider not mixing it too thoroughly. So when you mix on your little china dish like this, don't make it 100% homogenous all the way through like UHT milk. Just mix it slightly and lightly and then when it hits the paper, the mixing can continue and you get a much more natural effect, to be quite honest. So I got interrupted with this and uh, have uh, now come back and it's all dry. So it's good that that doesn't matter. And I'm going to start painting in the, the petals of the violets now. And uh, just dropping that in there. And uh, the colors of um, wildflowers like this, as opposed to cultivated ones, are always softer, less strident than uh, what you get in a garden. Um, so that's, that's nice to bear in mind when you are painting this. So I've let a little bit more of the alizarin crimson settle into the back petals there because in the original that I'm working from that's what she has. And I'm going to do the same here. This is lovely paper I'm working on here. It's not cold press, it's hot press and it's smooth. So that's um, different from what we usually use. For botanical work, you really need hot press paper if you're going to do proper botanical, proper, proper botanical work. This isn't proper botanical work because it's not in any way, shape or, um, any way, shape or form absolutely accurate. But I always say this is not in any way accurate, but this is at least representative of the way these wildflowers are. Okay, so those are the two slightly uh, more, what's the word, um, colourful wild pansies. Let me just soften that up there a little bit. And um, I'm going to take some sap green and mix it with some ultramarine to uh, give me a slightly softer green and a tiny dab of um, 
Lizarin Crimson just to break the green and then I'm going to just paint in stem and then the leaf like I said at the beginning has a serrated bottom part and then a kind of spear like section like that so that's how they they go and put the stem in for that one as well Add a little bit of yellow. The thing is, with uh, when you're going to add lines afterwards, um, you can correct anything that goes wrong. So you can improve the shape if uh, you feel you've wandered off. So now I've picked up the pen, the um, Stettler pigment liner, and I'm just going to emphasize the shape of the petals. Hopefully the pen will work. I think I might need to be buying some more soon. They do dry out. And I prefer the look when you use a broken line rather than a straight line. I just That's a personal thing. I'm putting some veins in there and some lines coming down from the centre, darkening up that area. And then the same for the stem, we just probably go down one side rather than both. And then once the, because the paint's still slightly damp, once the paint on this layer is completely dry, you can come back in and do a second layer just to emphasize the colors I'm going to have to swap pens that one seems to have decided to give up the ghost um. <clears throat> that's better so wonky lines messy lines if you like broken lines, just to give the impression of movement, maybe. A bit of shadow and those dark markings. If you were using uh, cold press paper with a fairly rough texture, it would be quite hard to get these fine lines, it would, they would break up even more, so you might not be very happy with that. So it's always worth considering. So now I can redraw these uh, indentations in the leaf and reshape that so it's a bit more the way I intended it to be. Draw in the center vein. Okay, so that's where we are so far, and now I'm going to go on and paint the next ones, and then I'll come back when I've got a bit further on with this. Okay, so that's the uh, most of the leaves, the first layer of the painting on the leaves. And now I'm going to do some petals of the dog violet, which is a much bluer shade altogether here. So I'm using the same thing, ultramarine and um, alizarin crimson, but less crimson, more blue. And I'm just dropping those in reasonably loosely. The shape of the petal is uh, very much determined by when you're painting it by the shape of your brush and luckily I was um, able to do this with a fairly new round pointed nylon brush. So this is a size 7 because this is quite a small painting. Um, and uh, it's got a lovely new point on it so that's really good. Now this flower over here is a um, heath dog 
violet, according to this book, which is quite botanically minded. Um, so I'm going to add more Lizarin Crimson to make it more on the pink side because this is much pinker than the others. And then these ones down here, the same thing. They are pink ones. There are days when you want to do things carefully, aren't there? And then there are days when you don't. So this is a painting for a careful day as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it has at least stopped raining. And I'm going to do these ones over here in more of a blue shade, at least that one. Then I'm going to add a tiny bit of pink and do this one more pinkish. It's a case of really varying the colours. That's the key to doing a pretty painting, is to pick your colours and use them in a varied way. Don't paint everything the same colour. God forbid. So these ones back here are dry now, the first ones I did. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit more um, colour there, just to make them a little bit more interesting. I quite like the way that's gone soft there. Could do the same thing here if you wanted to, just soften one part of that petal. Lift it out a little bit, maybe drop in a little bit more of a slightly different yellow colour to make it a little bit more varied. And then the leaves that I've done the background of the sap green, I'm mixing that with ultramarine and lemon yellow to the same principle. Just keep it lively and varied. And so I can go back in, do the second coat, paint. Not filling in this isn't colouring by numbers, it's not a colouring book for a child, it's um, a little bit more advanced than that, but don't be daunted, it's not difficult, anyone can do this, if I can do it, anyone can. Okay, a little bit more on this stem. Now obviously you could put lots more flowers in here. I'm sort of thinking I'd quite like, I think, I'd quite like another pink one over here. So I'm going to I'm going to put another one in. I'm going to pick up my pencil because I've fallen foul of that mistake before now. And it's a bit like when you forget to take your stick when you go in to visit the ram. It's always possible to make a mistake at the last minute, isn't it? Okay, so that's a pink one there. And you have to wait for it to dry before you put the yellow centre in, otherwise you will just get a brown mess because yellow and purple make brown. So we'll do that at the very last minute. Okay, so now the final line work. We can come into this one. These heart-shaped leaves have got lots of veining on them. So you can put in as much or as little as you like. And these are little 
um, spiky, well not spiky, but sharp pointed leaflets along the bottom there. So just going round the edge and putting in some of the veins to give some depth and interest. Another way you can do this, if you feel like it, is to leave some of them unpainted. So you can do some drawings and of the leaves and the flowers, and then just for variety's sake, you could leave some of them completely unpainted. And that's quite an interesting look too. I was thinking I might do some poppies like that. I think it might be, but that's a little bit more of a summary thing. I'm trying to stick with the seasons as you might have noticed, and um, the pansies definitely are not at the moment. Poppies not so much. I'm just painting in that stem that I missed and then a little dab of yellow there now that that's dry. These ones up here, the dog violets, common dog violet. I don't know why they're called dog violets, as if dogs wore violets. I mean, come on, I don't know. I think it might be, I don't know, from the Latin, I don't know. Tamsin, can you look it up? Why are they called dog violets? It's always best to be suspicious of Google. And when you're doing the lines around the leaves, if you want to leave part of it, there, so draw the line a slightly different shape from what you've coloured in. That looks good too, like this where you've got that unpainted un, uh, area. And as you can tell, coming in with the pen, you really can redefine the shape if you've lost the shape when you were painting it. So there, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more blue on these ones, just, to, just because. and maybe a tiny bit more pink on here. I 
And when that's completely dry, you can rub out the pencil lines if you like. And then you'll be left with a pretty little picture which will make a nice greetings card. I've done a kind of classical arrangement there in a kind of a triangular um, layout, but obviously that could be adapted for anything. I have a feeling I need one there though before I say goodbye. I'm going to put a small flower in here. Hopefully that's not a mistake. So there we are, one semi-botanical line and wash painting for spring, common dog violets, wild pansies and heath dog violets for your pleasure. Have a go, it's not hard, I'm sure you'll do better than me. So I shall say goodbye for now. If you've got a like to spare and you wouldn't mind donating it to our channel, that would be marvellous and uh, subscribe and turn on, sub on your notifications if you wouldn't mind, if you uh, don't mind being interfered with during the course of the day. So I look forward to next time and I'll say goodbye for now. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.